Wow, I'm so happy. So I just made it back to the barn after a very long day. I charged this thing up for a, a little bit of battery and I just wanted to tell the story real quick before I, before I crawl into the camper and, and pass out for the night. And I got meetings early in the morning um, that I gotta be alert for, unfortunately. I wish I could sleep in tomorrow. But I did this to myself, I realize that. So the story behind this car is that I found it on line, oh, how do you came back outside? I know how you're feeling, girl. I feel the same way.
We're going to go to bed in a minute, okay? I'll get you some dinner, and then we're going to go to bed. So the story is I texted the guy, and I actually had something going on tonight that I, that I ended up not doing because I really wanted to get this car, and he had a bunch of people uh, in line waiting for it, I guess. But uh, it was near Salina, Kansas, and I messaged him. He didn't really respond like I was thinking he would, so I, I was not hopeful that I would get the car. And then he finally responded back saying, hey, you're first in line. Um, I, I said, can you take $500 on Venmo? Hold it. He said, I don't do Venmo. I wanted to go out. Today's Tuesday. I wanted to go out Thursday. Um, I got a lot of meetings tomorrow. I had a show I wanted to go to tonight. And he... He said he would work with me. He didn't want to be unreasonable. He couldn't do Wednesday. Or no, he couldn't do Thursday. I couldn't do Wednesday. So... I said, you know, I really want this car. I didn't want to mess around and miss out on it. So I said, you know, I'm just going to, yesterday being Monday, I thought I'm just going to hop in the truck and get out to the farm, get the trailer and get down there and get it. Um, I ended up coming out early this morning. The car was a six hour, six hour plus drive from home in Denver. But I came to the farm to get the trailer first and then went to get the car. So it ended up being, I left the house today at 6.30 and it's 11.30 now. So, oh, it's only five hours. Okay, that's not too bad. 17 hour day and in the middle of it, I was here for maybe, probably not even a full hour, but maybe, let's say an hour so long day um but i got there the guy was the guy was super cool super cool family um they loved nadia his kids loved nadia at least they pretended they did even though she made some messes on their property they said they had dogs and they were fine with it but um so i got myself a 69 barracuda and this is one of the cars that, um, I won't say I've always wanted one, but as I got older, I mean, of course, when I was a, a teenager and in my 20s, I loved 70 Cudas mostly, 70 Challengers, but 70, you know, 70 Cuda, yeah, I'd love to have one. Um, but as I got older, I really started loving the way uh, the 69 looked, so. When this came up, I'm like, wow, I got to go get that thing. Um, so I'm really stoked. It's definitely a car that's that's been on my high priority list. I honestly didn't think I would ever get one. Um, this one comes with a no engine at all and no transmission, no master cylinder. So it was a, an originally a 318 car according to the guy I bought it from I'm not sure the story it came from Missouri actually it's got a Missouri title the guy I bought it from his dad is is into probably getting the story wrong but I, his dad's into into Volvos he had a Volvo he traded this for the Volvo and I got really lucky so my plan is to put a I think I want to just put a 318, 318 in it. And 318 is a, an engine that I don't love. But because it was a 318 car, oh no, I think I want to go back to 318. I think I'll keep it automatic on the column. Just I'll try to make it original as much as I can. So I got the Barracuda and I got the Marlin. So I got a, got a couple nice fish cars. Anyways, I'm going to go to bed and we'll unload this tomorrow if I have time. I think I will. Um, I might actually just pull it back out and get these cars moved around. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm so tired right now that um, I just need to go to bed. So I appreciate you guys clicking on this video and making it this far in it if you did. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope that 
it's fun to watch. Um, I love watching videos of these of guys yanking old cars out of random places and trying to get them back on the road. So I'm trying to trying to enjoy doing it. And that's really all I got. And I'm just. I don't know how to stop talking because I'm so freaking tired. So, all right. Thank you guys. I'm going to talk to you in the morning. Hope you have a good night. Good morning. It's another fine day out at Goathead Farm. Had a really long day yesterday. Um, had to wake up to a really early morning meeting and one that I had to be super engaged in and I was unprepared, but it went good. So it was a good start to the day, although it's still a pretty busy day. I haven't been able to get doing what I wanted to do. The uh, goat heads are coming in nicely. Find you some they're just everywhere. Our neighbor came out, so these are goat heads. I gotta, I gotta get rid of these somehow. I don't want it to be goat head farm anymore. <laughs> so he uses our water tank for his cattle in the winter and offered to mow our property with his brush hog. I took him up on it and um, Makes it really dry out here, but I guess it's nice to knock the weeds down. Um, I think the goat heads like to thrive when it's short like this, so it might be better for the goat to get rid of the goat heads to not mow. I don't know. These are all with the yellow flowers are goat head plants, and that's why I named this place Goat Head Farm because we're farming goat heads. So. These are really cool, these purple ones. If you are looking for some goat heads, what else people call them? Their scientific name is puncture vine. So not bad right now when they dry out their, these dried out little goat heads and they're freaking miserable. So yesterday I came out here early in the morning, <clears throat> early for me, and picked up the trailer and towed it to Kansas. So it's four, four and a half hours here from, from home in Denver and four and a half to get the car plus an hour or so messing around and, and this is what I got. 69 Plymouth Barracuda. So before I unload it, I'm gonna pull the Pontiac out, hoping I can push it by myself. And then I'm gonna get the Belvedere on dollies, move the engine lifts and rotate the Belvedere back into this corner. I'm gonna move all these windows off of there cause I don't want them falling. And then I'm gonna put the Marlin next to the Belvedere. And then I'm gonna bring in the Barracuda and sit next to the Marlin. So I'll have the two fish next to each other. So, uh, that's my plan for today, along with one more kind of stressful meeting with our government client. Um, and that's in about an hour. So after that, I do have a little bit of work to do, but I should be able to get, get in here and start moving cars around. So thanks for, uh, thanks for stopping by. <music>
That was the best one so far. That's how it should go. Super stoked on this car. Uh, I have to admit, I didn't know that there was a fastback and a coupe. I don't know that much about Barracudas. When I was a teenager, my one of my best friends had a 73 with a 318, but I always loved the 69, I guess to 67 body style. I'd like to have an older one too. I'd like to get one of those, but I, now I really want to get a 69 or 68 or 67 coupe because that's the body style I actually liked. I, I think more people like the fastback, which I love and I'm super stoked on this car. And I got a Barracuda. It was originally a 318 car, so let's walk around this guy um, and I'll show you the ins and outs of what I got. Um, this is a problem. Floorboards are, are in great shape. I just need just a little bit of, oh, what's that? I have no idea what that is. God, it has the smell. Why do they all have to have the smell? Check this out. <laughs> I guess that goes here. So that's cool. Oh, let's go back to the interior. The doors, well, hold on a second. There's a problem with the door that I gotta fix, but overall the doors are I mean, everything's just on the verge of failing. It did not have a rear fold down seat, but he put a bracket in there for it. I'm not sure what those are, maybe for seat belts. Headliner's gone. Um, bench seat, huh? Armrest. So I can put that up and get Molly in the center. And I like the idea of that. Gauges are all here. He actually gave me a set of keys for it, which I'm not sure that any car that I've bought recently has keys. So you to fix that. Uh, it's got the seat belts that go up, fold up here. That's how my 69 Camaro was too. I, my evaluation is, is that the body is in great shape. The guy put ladder bars on it and uh, shackles, kind of, I don't know if he was gonna drag race it or maybe it was a drag race car. So obviously some work to do on this thing. Overall though, I like the Barracuda and the, in between the seats. I don't know what was supposed to be back here. I got some learning to do on these cars for sure. Three eighteen car, three on the tree, automatic. Uh, reminds me of my Jeep Cherokee. But I mean, I love that no one put cut that out and put a stereo in it. No glove box. Get a free towel. Um, interesting. These are probably not, I don't know, they might be, these might be actually restorable. Paint this. That door's nice. Maybe you never had passengers. Pretty nice. Um, if I roll the window up a little bit more. For some reason I towed it home with the windows down and it was raining the whole way home. Well, not the whole way, but a lot of the way. And it would have been smart to roll the windows up. Wing windows, I like that. Uh, guy showed me how to pop the hood. I'm not sure how he did that. Like that, I believe. And then, so it's got, a, it's got an awesome engine in it. 
What the hell? He told me it had an engine. Ah, oh, son of a... I'm thinking I'm going to put a 318 back into it. But, boy, how cool would it be to put a big block? People seem to not like 383s, but I had a 75 Ram Charger that originally was a 318 truck. Someone put a 440 Magnum in it that I sold that I regret. Uh, then I bought a 383 and put it in there, and that thing was extremely powerful. So if I could find a strong 383, that'd be fun, but I would actually like to put a 318 back in here with I don't know, Mopar 727, three-speed transmission, what are they called? Whatever. Uh, and let me go get the keys. What are you doing, girl? You want to come out? Flies are going crazy. So that's her favorite place to be because... Because I'm not in the camper. And if I'm in there, she gets nervous. So we've got all this going on, and she is terrified that she's going to get left behind. So she just goes ahead. The, the vehicle that's most likely to drive out of here is this one, right, girl? And so I'm going to lay in here, and I'm not going to get left behind. Okay, we love you, girl. That's Nadia. That's our favorite girl. Okay. So, Gary Crossley, Liberty, Missouri. Interesting. I wonder if this car came from that dealership. Check out these keys. Look like my old Ram Charger keys. Ah, I missed that truck. Okay. Let's see. I think there's a trunk key on here. Those are three keys. Oh, is the gas? Is this thing lock? No. I'm not sure what the third key is for. Let's see if this is the trunk key. Well, park keys go upside down, don't they? Barracuda. Ever since I bought this car, I've just been singing Barracuda all the time. It's kind of annoying. That's the trunk key. I'm not sure why there's two other keys. Okay, random parts. I was gonna try to do the cool thing and uh, go out and, and try to get this thing running and drive it home, but I would have had to actually take an engine and transmission with me. Oh, that's cool. Oh wow, Big A. Remember Big A Auto Parts? forgot about them. I might be able to use that filter though. I guess this folds down this way. Yeah, this folds down this way and you've got the whole trunk, the whole, I guess you can actually sleep in there. I bet I could talk Molly into that. There's a little bit, there's a little bit of daylight coming in there. Oh wow. Floor jack. That looks original, huh? That's cool. Okay. Well, that must be the original color. That's Probably the color will be painting it. I don't know. I love this car. What a cool freaking car. Take the shackles, the those are called shackles, right? And the ladder bars and 318, my least favorite Dodge engine. Um Automatic transmission. I'm going to put it back the way it was. I think these seats are totally restorable. If I find a good upholstery guy, that, I mean, he can rebuild these seats. Um, paint it back to the original color. Bodywork. It's not actually an overwhelming project. I guess there is no drive shaft. Power steering. These cars all have that smell of it's it's mouse pee or um, raccoon whatever. So 
I guess this is a known, the guy that I bought it from said this is a known, there's a common problem with this year Barracuda that this top of this fender rots out and nobody knows why. I don't know. Am I over my head? I don't know, probably. But what a cool car. If anybody has any advice for me on this car, I would love to hear it. Um, contemplating going big block, but probably do a 318. Maybe I'll do a 318 board over so it's more like a 340. I don't know, but um, I'd like to get an original engine back in it original build um, I prefer the notch I prefer the notchback coupe than the fastback but this is growing on me I hate to say it, it kind of looks like a, a maverick or a I guess when they made these maybe it made me think well maybe that's what they what Ford and Chevy were going for with the Vega and the and the Maverick they were going more for this it's too bad that the Maverick and the and the Vega didn't evolve like the Barracuda did. Um, so I'm gonna back this thing in and then I'm gonna show you something that I think is super cool. So give me a minute here. We'll back this guy in. Oh my God, the car rolls so thing that I thought was kind of, of not, not funny but I don't know what I don't know what the word for it is it's interesting how car manufacturers do similar things I guess I don't know I think the Barracuda first year was 64 I can't see me with that light um, and the Marlin this is the first year for the Rambler Marlin, it was a 65. So they must have taken suit from Plymouth who made the Barracuda and they made the Marlin fastback. And it was all because of this guy, right? This is a 65, but 64 and a half Mustang, pony car, everyone's like, uh-oh, better do that. So, AMC and 65 turned their Rambler, they made a Marlin edition with the Fastback, which I think is super cool. And then I think in, I gotta go look and see what the first year for the Barracuda is. This is the second gen Barracuda. I need to get a first gen. I need to get a first gen Barracuda and I need to get a coupe, second gen coupe for my museum. So this is, this is the museum, and that's my pigeon. That's the, I think that's the baby. I know you don't want pigeons in your barn, but they keep me company. And that is gonna do it for today. What's next? Well, it's funny you should ask. There's a slight chance that I might have bought a 1960 Bel Air that is in worse condition than the Belvedere. And there's also a slight chance that I got a 1960 Biscayne donor car to go with it. But other than that, we're gonna to try to get the Pontiac uh, 389 running and driving. So that's gonna be fun. So, Stay tuned, we're working on the little house too. Next time Wally comes out, we're gonna to try to continue getting the floor out of the little house 
make that livable. I got a plow truck, so if it snows this winter, I can still come out in the winter. Got to seal this roof. And plenty of stuff to keep us busy. So thank you guys for riding along. That's kind of cheesy. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. And hope you guys are having an awesome day. Peace.